So welcome in this uh, new episode of Future Farming, uh, Robot User Feedback. So today we are in uh, Maury, New South Wales in Australia and we are with uh, Gerrit. Hello Gerrit, could you please present yourself and your farm? Yeah, I'm now from um, in, uh, Bee Food Farms and um, yeah, we have uh, uh, 12,000 hectares of uh, farming here. Uh, we grow uh, mainly wheat, barley, chickpeas. And that is the main crops, uh, no cotton, uh, no water uh, uh, problems. As you can see around, a lot of machinery, but today we are not here to talk about the uh, class selection. We are here to talk about the Axid Agrobot that you purchased one year ago. Yeah. Why did you choose, uh, why did you purchase a robot? Um, yeah, I actually got the only operable unit to, um, that is uh, ready to, to use. And that uh, therefore uh, got, a lot, got a lot of good uh, features, and uh, therefore we uh, chose that as the. That was the best, best choice. Best choice. Yeah. I've heard that you were one of the first uh, farmer in the world to use autonomous tractor. Is it true? Uh, yeah, I think so. Just that was uh, about five or seven years ago that we uh, asked a few uh, people in the Netherlands uh, precision farming. And uh, to make a system on the existing uh, farm tractor, and that was uh, uh, working really nice. And uh, the problem is that John uh, Deere did see that too. Okay. And then we, we, we lost that. Uh, they bought the whole. Uh, they bought the company. Bought the company, and then yeah, nothing. We, so you had to find a new solution. A new to... solution, and therefore we look around in the rest of the world, and in, uh, especially in America and in Germany. And the Europe, uh, and that's where you find uh, Axis. Yeah. Let's see the machine with your with your daughter, Marika. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So welcome back. We have uh, this time with uh, Marika. Hello, Marika. Uh, can you present uh, yourself uh, quickly, please? I'm a fifth generation uh, farmer. So we've got this family farm. Um, it's about 12,500 hectares. Um, so there's yeah, a lot of work to do because we've got uh, only a handful of permanent staff. So uh, That's why you, you have uh, invested in a robot. So since how long did you invest in this machine? Um, this, the Agbot arrived at the beginning of the year. Okay. So almost, yeah, oh yeah, 10 months ago. And how many hours, working hours, have you already done with it? Uh, so far we've done 500 hours of uh, uh, tramline renovation. So this Agbot. machine that we can see in the back? Yeah, okay. this is the... Um, the airport is on three meters. Every, all the tracks on the farm is on three meter tram lines. So when they are compacted with wet weather, we need to renovate them and make them flat again. And that's where why we have the tram line renovated behind the airport. But there's, there's a lot of work to get it all done. And have you tried any of the implement in the back of the machine? Yeah, we have a spot sprayer as well. We've got a 24 meter spot sprayer that uh, we tested behind the airport as well. That okay. runs, runs really nice. And um, we are in the process of um, developing that it runs with a 48 meter spot sprayer. Would you be uh, happy to present the machine for us? Yeah, sure. Okay, let's Good go. Around. It's got a, a, a Deutsch engine, mm -hmm. a Deutsch diesel engine, 156 horsepower. Okay. Uh, drives an electric uh, drivetrain. It's got uh, a LiDAR. Um, for safety at the top and it's got a camera at the front and the back. Yeah, just under the LiDAR, right? Yeah, just under the LiDAR so you can see also on the app. There's an app for the phone so you can keep an eye out if it's in the field so you can see what's all happening. We start off with mapping the field. So the big obstacles are mapped and the LiDAR will detect new obstacles that are there in the field when it's driving. What is this uh, big white thing? That is the Starlink. So we've got a Starlink dish on the on the machine. It's got uh, perfect Wi-Fi. Um, we don't have good internet reception on the farm, and um, with the Starlink we cover every every corner of the farm, and we always have good reception. So that's so how you get uh, 
full connectivity on the farm. Full connectivity and the, uh, the communication to the phone and to the computers is always there okay. because we have the, the Starlink, so there's never hiccups. Concerning the security, you talk about LiDAR, but I think that you have something in the front, like a, it's a bumper, right? Yeah, a bit of a bumper. Um, and we've got extra stops, emergency stops, um, just, yeah, just in case we need to, uh, if, if there's something that we need to stop the machine for. How do you control uh, this machine when you move it? Uh... We've got a controller here. Okay. Looks like one of those game controllers. Um, the, yeah, we just make it walk from the shed to the field and that's really easy, we don't need a trailer. So just, you use it more for logistic purpose? Yes, yeah, just to transport it. Um, we just drive the car behind it and we control it from, with this one. It works really well. So this is a tramline renovator and it will move, move the earth so it flats, flattens out uh, the wheel tracks. Let's uh, make it run? Yeah, yeah, good idea. So you have the machine since one year. Yes. Uh, what are the main benefits you, you see after this one year experience versus a classic tractor? We like the electri uh, electric drive, less maintenance than a hydraulic. It's uh, more efficient as well. Uh, the autonomy saves a lot of uh, man hours. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's more economic that way as well. It's uh, more efficient. So In terms normal. of fuel, in terms of what? In terms of fuel and in terms of man hour. And it's more um, more productive. The productivity is higher with an autonomous tractor than with a, a normal man tractor. Do you have any numbers to share with us? Yeah, a normal man tractor is about 65% productivity, okay. we've calculated. And with the autonomous tractor, it's 80% productivity. Okay, so 15 so, uh, person increase with this autonomous machine. Yeah, and it's quite a lot. And is there still a few things that you would improve on this machine? I guess it's not perfect yet. No, nothing is perfect. It's, Nef of, it's never, never perfect, perfect for yeah. farmers. Yes, exactly. So it uh, would be nice to have a bigger uh, fuel tank. Okay. So we only have to refuel once a day. That would be nice. If that can last for 24 hours, then we only have to stop once a day and then the machine can just go. Uh, we would like to have more options for implements. So uh, yeah, the 48 meter spot sprayer. That that it's coming. Yes, you know, exactly. Step by step, this yeah. works well, and you are yeah. You want, of course, you want to use it more often on yes. different tasks. Yeah, and if if that works, yeah, we do two uh, two thousand hours of uh, spot spraying a year. Mm -hmm. So with the 48 meter spot sprayer, if that works, and uh, we probably need an extra extra uh, autonomous tractor for other uh, uh, for all the uh, hours for, for all the other hours that we want to put on the autonomous tractor. Like a, a fertilizer spreader, it would be nice if that would work as well. But that's that, that's future. It's just nice to have. Anything yeah. else you would like to improve in terms of logistic or? It would be nice to have a teach and play option, so you can just first drive the route where you want the autonomous tractor to go, and just say go, and it will go from A to B. So you don't have to follow it with the car if you transport it across the farm. Because right so now you you move it from the field to field with the joystick. With the controller, yeah, the you controller. have to follow it. It works fine, but it's 10 kilometers an hour. It's, yeah, uh, it's slow it's a, in Australia. It's very slow. Yes. <laughs> And uh, how, how works uh, the support and maintenance with this machine? Because it's a European-based company. Yes, yeah, we are, we are very happy with the support. We've got uh, Exceeds in the, in the Netherlands on a, just a phone call away. And uh, they do the software updates at night. So uh, yeah, we don't have to stay up for that. We've got a Starlink, so they can just call in straight away. Mm -hmm. The maintenance and the service comes from Land Power. Land Power is the class dealer for Australia and New Zealand. So they do the, the service and the maintenance from here and that, yeah, that works really well. This experience, your experience with this machine is pretty positive and globally positive, right? Yes, yeah. What would you say to a grower that is thinking about investing in automation? What would be your advice? Um, I would say do the calculations. Yeah, autonomy is a no-brainer. If you do the calculations, yeah, it's just the way to go. It's the way forward it, to make the, the jobs more interesting for the staff you have. 
and to do the, the, the repetitive task with an autonomous tractor. You can do more hours with an autonomous tractor than with a normal tractor, so you need less machinery in the shed. So it yeah. pays by itself? Yes. Thank you very much for sharing your experience and uh, hosting me. And I would like to thank you for watching uh, this episode. And we will see each other in another episode somewhere else and with another robot. Yeah. See you. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Bye.